Lesson 1.4, Powers of 10 and Exponents. We introduced Powers of 10 in 4th grade math video 12.6, which is linked in the description. And powers of 10 are factors of 10. So 10 times 10, we have two factors of 10, or 10 to the second power, or the second power of 10. Here we have three factors of 10, so this would be 10 to the third power, or the third power of 10. Expressions with repeated factors, such as 10 times 10 times 10, can be written by using a base, that's the 10, with an exponent. It's a little number in the upper right-hand side. And the base is the factor that is to be repeated. The exponent tells us how many times to use that factor. So for 10 times 10 times 10, we've repeated it three times. We write 10 as our base number, and we repeated it three times. We put a little three exponent up there. That's equal to 1,000, because 10 times 10 is 100, and 100 times 10 is equal to 1,000. So 10 to the third power is equal to 1,000. We can model powers of 10 with base 10 blocks. Here we have one little cube. That would be 10 to the 0 power, because we don't even have a 10. It's too great of a number. We only have a 1. So there's no 10s here. There's just a 1. That's 10 to the 0 power. Here we have 10 unit cubes. That would be 1 times 10 to the 1st power. That would be 1 times 10. Here we have 100 cubes. That would be 1 times 10 to the second power. That would be 1 times 10 times 10. See, we have two factors of 10, so there's a little 2 exponent. That would be 1 times 100. Here we have 1,000 unit cubes. That would be 1 times 10 to the third power. That's 1 times 10 times 10 times 10. That's 1 times 1,000. So if you notice, the exponents are read as ordinal numbers. Ordinal numbers are like the numbers of your grade levels, first, second, third, fourth. So this is 10 to the first power, 10 to the second power, 10 to the third power. There is a pattern for powers of 10. If you look at these, you'll notice a pattern. We have 1 times 10 to the 0 power. That's equal to 1. There's no 0 written here. And there's a 0 for an exponent. Look at 2 times 10 to the 0 power. We have a 2 written here and no 0 because the 0 is the exponent. And here we have 3 times 10 to the 0 power. We just have a 3 with no 0 written after it because the exponent is a 0. But look what happens when we have 10 to the first power. We have a 1 here. We have 1, 0. We have a 1 here. We have 1, 0. We have 1 here. We have 1, 0. And look what happens when it's to the second power. We have a 2 exponent, we have two zeros. 2 exponent, 2 zeros, 2 exponent, 2 zeros. So the pattern is the number of the exponent is the amount of zeros written after the factor. So here we have a factor 1 followed by three zeros. Here we have a factor of 2 followed by three zeros. Factor of 3 written followed by three zeros because it's got a three for the exponent. Do you see the pattern? We can multiply a whole number by a power of 10. So here's our whole number four. We're multiplying it by a power of 10 as 10 to the third power. We have four times, there's going to be three factors of 10. 10 times 10 times 10. That's four times 1,000. 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000. That's equal to 4,000. So here we have a 4 followed by three zeros. See that? And we can re represent an amount with fewer digits. It's much easier to write 4 times 10 to the third power than it is to write 4 times 10 times 10 times 10. Here we have 8 times 10 to the fourth power. We have 8, our whole number, times 10 is a factor four times. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. That would be 8 times 10,000. It's equal to 80,000. 
we have four zeros because of this exponent four and the base is a 10. Using an exponent can help us avoid errors in a long string of multiplication. So here we have five times all these tens and it was written that it's equal to five million. But is this correct? Well, let's count the tens. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tens. That's five times 10 to the seventh power. That means we should have seven zeros. And look, there's only six zeros. So this is wrong. It's not five million, it's 50 million. An exponent makes it easier to see how many times to multiply a number. Now look at this, we have 10 and our exponent is a little n. And finding the value of that n. So a variable is a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown amount. Popular variables are x and n, and they're written in italics. So they looked a little script, okay? And the x can be confused with the symbol, the big x, for multiplication when not written carefully. And we're going to talk about other ways to write an equation or an expression for multiplication without using that big X coming up in a future chapter. So two plus N equals five. Well, then the N would be equal to three, wouldn't it? Here we have three times N is equal to 12. That N is taking the place of the unknown amount, which should be four. Three times four is equal to 12. And this would be read as 10 to the nth power. We would read this as nth power. So the value of the n is changing for each equation. Here it equals 3. Here it equals 4. We don't know what it is equal to here. We just know it's 10 to some power. They're saying the nth power as an unknown amount of power. What is the value of n? We have 10 to the fourth power, and it says it's equal to 10 times 10 to the nth power. And we think 10 to the fourth power, we'd have four factors of 10, wouldn't we? It would be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Well, it's showing 10 times 10 to the nth power. So this one is not included, see? So we just need to figure out what this would be 10 times this, and that would be 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000, so that's 10 times 1,000. We have three zeros, so we can write it as 10 to the third power. So in this case, the n is equal to three. So it'd be 10 to the third power. Here we have 10 to the fifth power is equal to 10 times 10 to the nth power. And we think 10 to the fifth power, well, we would have five factors of 10. We're not including this first one, so it would just be these four factors of 10. So that would be 10 times 10,000. And we have four zeros, so it's 10 times 10 to the fourth power. So in this case, the n is equal to four. And we can write 60,000 using an exponent. 60,000, we have four zeros, so six will be our whole number, and it'll be times 10,000. 10,000 has four zeros. That would be six times 10 to the fourth power. So we think we can write 10,000 as 10 to the fourth power because it has four zeros. And we can write 600,000 using an exponent. 600,000, I see five zeros, that would be 100,000. That would be six times 100,000. That would be six times 10 to the fifth power. We think we can write 100,000 as 10 to the fifth power because it has five zeros. Lake Erie, on the border of the United States and Canada, covers a surface of about one times 10 to the fourth power square miles and the Great Salt Lake in Utah covers about two times 10 to the third power square miles. 
Using these approximations, what is their difference in square miles? So these aren't exact square miles. It says it's about that much for both of them. It's about that much. So we think the first thing we need to do is write each of these in standard form. Then subtract to find their difference because we need to know the difference. So Lake Erie is 1 times 10 to the 4th power. That would be 1 times 10 as 4 factors. So that would be equal to a 1 with 4 zeros. That's 10,000 square miles. And the Great Salt Lake is 2 times 10 to the 3rd power. That would be 2 as a factor with 3 tens as factors because there's a 3 exponent. That means we're going to have a 2 with 3 zeros. That's 2,000 square miles. We need to find the difference between them. 10,000 minus 2,000 is 8,000. So it's 8,000 square miles difference between Lake Erie and the Great Salt Lake. And we can write their difference as a whole number multiplied by a power of 10. 8,000, I see three zeros, so we can use the whole number 8 times 10 to the third power. We think three zeros, so we use 10 to the third power as a factor with the whole number 8. Remember, an exponent is not a factor. It tells us how many times to repeat or use a factor. We have 10 to the third power. This does not equal 10 times 3. We're not multiplying these two together. This 3 is telling us how many tens to multiply. So that's 10 times 10 times 10. It's telling us to multiply it 3 times. It's equal to 1,000. So the 10 is our base and our 3 is our exponent telling us how many times to use that 10 as a factor. We can write a pattern to show the value of 15 times 10 to the 4th power. We have 15 times 10 to the 0 power and we write 15 times 10 to the 1st power, to the 2nd power, to the 3rd power, until we get to 10 to the 4th power. 10 to the 0 power just means 15 times 1. We don't have a 0. See? That's just 15. 15 times 10 to the 1st power means we have one factor of 10. This means we have two factors of 10. That would be 10 times 10. That would be 100. Here we have three factors of 10. That would be 1,000. There's three as an exponent. We have three zeros. We have four as an exponent. We have four zeros. It's four factors of 10. So the pattern goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And here we have zero zeros. We have one zero, two zeros, three zeros, four zeros. And we can see that 15 times 10 to the fourth power is equal to 150,000. We wrote a 15 with four zeros after it. We can write an expression that shows four times the third power of 10. We have four times and the third power of 10. For seven times the fifth power of 10, we have a seven times the fifth power of 10. An expression contains numbers, variables, and operation symbols, but no equal sign. An equation contains numbers, variables, operation symbols, and an equal sign. So remember, operation symbols can be like a plus, minus, an x for multiplication, a division sign, or parentheses. So an expression does not have an equal sign. An equation does have an equal sign. We might see it with or without the answer. 4 times 10 to the third power is an expression, but if we write 4 times 10 to the third power equals, now it's an equation. See the difference? No equal sign, equal sign. So in your schoolwork, if you see some instructions that say write an expression, well then it's just telling you to write an expression without an equal sign so that it won't be an equation.
So remember that the exponent just tells us how many times to use that base factor, okay? Our next lesson, 1.5, we're going to talk about multiplication patterns with two-digit numbers and powers of 10. I hope I'll see you there, and I hope you have a really great day. Bye.